against who, um, you know, who, who are already on the fixed routine to perform for today. We are very open for any of you who's feeling feeling the mood to come up and tell us some jokes as well. All right. So before you do so, don't just come up here and grab the mic by typical Ivan Club, uh, Ivan Club karaoke style. Right. Don't don't come and do that over here today. Just come and meet me personally. I'll be seated behind the stage over here. You come and meet me personally and tell me that like, okay, I, I won't go up and do like maybe five minutes. Maybe I'm gonna do like about two or three punchlines or one-liners and stuff like that. We are more than happy to get you guys to come on board and to um, give yourselves a try on the stand-up comedy stage right here today. All right? And also for those of you who are first time coming to our shows, thank you so much. I hope you got the info from uh, our text or word of mouth or even our Facebook page. If you didn't, do follow us on our Facebook page, which is at Saranawak. S A R A L A W A K. Right? It's like Sarawak, but you add the la in the middle because we are all Sarawak and Sarawak, apparently. Right? And uh, do follow us on Facebook. We also have an Instagram page and all that. Alright, thank you guys. You finally found a seat, right? Nice, cool. Okay, so um, without much further ado, I'm going to start to introduce our first comic for tonight. This guy, very interestingly speaking is the other Indian guy in our group. And you know, for me, growing up as an Indian guy in a Chinese school, I've always gotten used to standing out in the crowd. I mean, my height is just not really bad. Like people sometimes don't, can't tell the difference if I'm doing stand-up comedy or sit-down comedy, give me a chair, it's like, it's pretty much the same thing, right? But this guy is like the other Indian guy in the group, so it's like kind of stealing all my thunder kind of thing, you know. So it's okay, you gotta give space to other comedians to come up as well. So we're we're, we're very excited to have him on board. So um, you know, growing up, I believe in the Chinese community, your mom will say that like, you know, if you don't study well, like, you become like the apu nene over there, you know, like, you become like the apu nene. All right. For those of you who don't know, apu nene, apu nene is a very cute term used by certain communities to refer to the Indians. But don't worry about this Apu Nene because this Apu is Apu with Nene. Yes, this Apu with Nene is going to come on stage and get your, you know, your funny bones tickled and stuff like that. So without further ado, we're going to introduce our next comic, Siva. We have to get it to Siva, guys. A big hand for Ashwin. If it wasn't for him, I won't be on stage right now because uh, I always, I, I, I've, been, I've been in show business for a long, long time. More behind the scenes, sometimes as an MC, and this and that. But uh, after watching him do his stuff at one of my shows last year, I told myself, hey, I think I can do this. So here I am, my name is Siva, Siva Nason, Shan Mughal Lim Yong, born and bred Sarawakian, fifth generation. I think there's not many people who can, you know, make that claim, fifth generation, but yeah, I got proof. Yeah, I had to find proof, you know, to tell my Malay friends, you know, you guys are from Indonesia. <laughs> we, we are from Sarawha. Right, we even have a street here, we don't have a Jalan Melayu. Have you heard of Jalan Melayu in Kuching? No? But you have heard of Uh, 
What's going on in this, one, this, this nice place of ours? Anyway, born and bred here, grew up in a nice little village behind King Center, and you guys know where King Center is. Just behind King Center, it's a village called Kampong Tebuan Dayak. Now it's a Dayak Kampong, right? Kampong Tebuan Dayak. But lo and behold, there were two Indian families, only two. And coincidentally, a third one, and <coughs> from there, right? Cecilia is also from Kampong Tebuan Dayak. I found out later that she's from that Kampong. But anyway, two Indian families, one was my family. Reason was because my grandfather, who's a Kedazan, was you know angkat by a Iban guy, and uh, they got a piece of land there. And uh, he's married my grandmother, who's Indian. And my grand uncle, who married a Iban lady, and he also lived there. So two two Indian families live in an Iban kampong. I grew up speaking Iban. I spoke Iban. I was very, very fluent in Iban. In fact, when I went to school, first day of school, the teacher, teacher was telling me Bahasa Melayu and they were talking to me in Malay. I did not even understand Malay. I understood Iban, I did not understand Malay. At home, we spoke two languages. We either spoke Iban or we spoke English. Right? And in my village, they only called me either two things. Lah. One is orang niat or tambi gele. The song was the song was like tambi gele gele, pecah pele. And the other song that we, we always sing after we sing the tambi gele song, I used to sing the song, no? I used to sing the song myself. Tambi gele gele, pecah pele. And then sambung chow chow chow, cina ku chow. Ami pisau potong lanjau. <laughs> when is school? Then I went to school. First day of school, got introduced to my classmates. Teacher asked me to stand up, say say your name. I said my name is Sivan Nason. Said what? Sivan Nason. It is too long. Huh? Can you tell me a shorter name, shorter version of your name? Okay, my name is Siva. Sivan. No teacher, Siva. Sivan. I said no teacher, Siva. Sivan. I said no teacher, Siva. Sivan. I said Siva. No lah, Sivan. I said sir, you are the teacher, so you must be right lah. So for six years of my life, primary one to primary six, I was called Sivan. So I got three names already. One is Orangnya. Everybody knows about orang minyak, right? You guys look too young to know about orang minyak. Orang minyak means, in English, it means oil man. And in those days, there was a big, nice movie, very, very popular. The whole country knows about the movie. After that movie, no kids want to go out in the night time. Because orang minyak will come and knock you. Right? So, orang minyak, Siva, Sivan, Tambi, Ah, I forgot one more. In my kampong, there was a famous song by Sudirman. Because of that song, it's about it's about armed forces now. Say si baju hijau. So people call me Siba. So I had four names. When I went to form one, my teacher called me Indian boy. I got five names. So what happened is. All this has become something, some sort of an identification for myself. Wherever I go, everywhere in Kuching, if people call me Sivan, I know that one uh, primary school. People call me Siva, that one must be from Kampung Tabondaya. But if people call me properly with my name, Siva or Siva Nisan, I say no, no, no. It's like caller ID, cannot recognize, unrecognized number. So I don't, I don't really respond to those people lah. Now, as life went on, I traveled a little bit. My dad was from the Air Force. We went to, you know, various towns in Kuching, in Sarawak, in Malaysia. I was in Kedah. In Kedah, there was this old man who was living next door. He's a Pahaji. He's a Mayam every day. When we were about to leave Kedah, 
the day we were leaving, we were like packing our bags, going to go back to Kuching. This Paji called my mother. And my father said, said, Alinga, Lucy, I want to tell you, you don't worry. I'm very confident. Very, very confident. You too will go to heaven. You definitely will go to heaven. And my mom was wondering, why this guy suddenly telling her, for three years they lived there, he never talked to them, we live our life, he lived his life, but suddenly on the last day he's telling to my mom, you are going to heaven, you are confirmed going to heaven. So my mom was curious, my mom asked, Aji, this guy, tell me, why? Why are you telling me that suddenly that I'm going to go to heaven, my husband is going to go to heaven? He said, Amma, your son, You've been calling your God day and night, day and night, day in and day out. You will call your God Siva, 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 come here, come to me, Siva, come to me. So this old man really thought that my mother was praying to God, but actually my mom was trying to find where I am. This was my life, traveling with my dad, came back to Sarawak, finished my high school, I went to university. In university, my first day in university was a big culture shock. As Ash was telling you guys just now, in Kuching, we are special. Everywhere we go, we are the only one, right? Some people say we give color to the, to the function, right? <laughs> Something. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, when I went to KL, first day in college, I saw all these Indian guys. No? So I went to them, you know, everybody, I said, hi. 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 And everybody was wondering, what the hell is this guy doing saying hi, hi to everybody? Like one superstar, as if I'm all supposed to know who is he. See, what happened is in Kuchi, whenever I meet another Indian, I will forget my tangan. And the Indian will also want to get tangan to me. Because we were like, oh yes, another one. Ooh, another one alive. Yes, yes, there's another one of us here. Yes, yes, there's another one here. But when I go to Kuala Lumpur, I walk into this place in Pak Pataling Jaya, Session 14. The school, the, the school name is State College. Some of Indian MIC run college, right? All Indians. I got that one. Like a big superstar, look like a superhero. Hello, hi, how are you? Hi, hi, how are you? How are you? To the point that I almost got beaten up. Lah. <laughs> few days in school, first few days in college, I was also at that time into this hip hop thing. I was dressing myself up, um, following this group called Criss Cross. Criss Cross, not only did they call themselves Criss Cross, they dressed themselves also Criss Cross. The pants will be upside down, the zip will be behind, the shirt also will be behind. So I did that, lah. So my shirt behind, I zip behind, everything behind, my hair like pubic hair on the head, you know, everything following this cross. To the point that this guy started calling me nigger. And after I put that guy into the ambulance and sent him to the hospital, nobody called me nigger anymore. Lah. So that was in college. And I just grew and learning my trying to be an Indian in Kuala Lumpur, I learned a lot about Gang bang, gangs, gangster lifestyle. Like it was basically something coming out of TV. Like. I thought, you know, we were like, uh, I don't know what to call it, from the Bronx or something like that. So I really wanted to know more about this Indian culture, or rather the modern Indian culture of Kuala Lumpur. So I followed them here and there. They brought me to this place where people drank Tori. Anybody knows what's Tori? Please shout out for Tori. Anybody knows Tori? Tori, you, know, you, you only know beer only la. It's like Toa, but it's made from Nipa. There in Kuala Lumpur is Tori. And they serve Tori in this big pole, big, big mugs, huge mugs. You go to this uh, sort of like a hut, and people sit in a big round circle, and you bring your own mug, you bring your own mug. Eh? When you go, you pay three ringgit, you scoop that thing and you sit down. Eh? But one thing else was happening. Some guy was taking this beef and then he was putting something green inside there. Then he put some tomato on it. 
and he was turning, turning, turning the thing, and he nicely lit the thing, turning, turning, he eat cut, and he smoked. Then he smoked, he passed. The thing was passed. Lah. And I'm a smoker, I smoke cigarette. But I didn't know, I thought, wow, this is a nice tradition, lah, no? People are passing and sharing the cigarette. It's like the beast pipe of the great Indian or something like that. The thing came to me. When it came to me, it was like at the end. So I took a few puff and I threw, threw it down and I stopped it. Suddenly you can see three of my friends suddenly jump. Listen, guys, relax, relax, relax. He doesn't know anything. He's from Sarawak. He doesn't know our culture. He don't know. He's really stupid, right? I didn't know that the thing is that when you that the there's a there's a law, unspoken law, where the person who likes the smoke must be the person who stab it out. I didn't know that. So I like a stupid fellow. So that was my lesson lah in Kuala Lumpur, learning about the lifestyle of gangsters in Kuala Lumpur. Came back to Kuching, I decided to go into like what I'm doing now, entertainment. We were doing uh, road shows for tourism. Before that, we you know we, we went traveling the whole country. We went to Australia, went to Hong Kong, went to Singapore, promoting Sarawak as a place. But before that, I was asked to walk the streets here, all along the waterfront here, and um, you know talk to tourists. So I was watching. I was, when I was one day, I was on on my one of my walks, and I had brochures and stuff like that. I was targeting tourists. I saw this white guy talking to this Iban fellow. And the white guy and the Iban guy was having a communication right now. You know, in those days, there was a place, Merdeka Palace, or Merdeka Plaza, not yet yet. There's a place there called Supersonic, right? And this white guy, he wanted to eat Western food. So he was asking the old man, where is the Supersonic? The old man was telling him, oh, Supersonic, no more to Supersonic, yeah. Supersoniknya, but the pan was so fast. The white guy was like, ah, he doesn't know what is going on. So I said, so, 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 uh, what he's saying is, the supersonic is in front of the post office. Then the white guy asked him again, ask, where is the post office? Oh, no, 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 post office. Post office, but the pan, supersonic. So it was going on and on and on. I decided to tell the man, no, 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 sir, I tell you, you just walk straight, take a left, see one big Victorian building in front of it, that's where the place is, uh, huh? so you just go there. Before he left, he was asking me, and uh, at that time, iPhone, I think iPhone 2 had come out already. Not even now, it's iPhone 7, 10, 11, 21, I don't know, but at that time, iPhone 2 was out already, and iPad is out already. So there was an iPad, there was an iPhone, there was a iPod, whatever I I I like. So, so I don't know for that reason maybe the guy suddenly asked me, asked me, sir, can you please tell me how do I get to the Iban Longhouse? <laughs> talking about Iban, then I realized oh shit Iban. So I said to him, sorry sir, it's not Iban, it's not like Ray Ban, it's not like iPhone, it's Iban. Oh Iban. So I said okay, you want to go to Iban Longhouse okay? On this street, there's so many uh, travel agencies, they will bring you there, no problem. Next tour, we went to Sriaman. And in Sriaman, I was walking down the street, you know, we were talking about visit Sarawak here, yeah, but we also wanted to promote domestic tourism. We wanted Sriaman people to spend more time in Kuching, or Sriaman people go to Miri, or many people come to Kuching and we wanted domestic tourism as well. So we went to Sri Aman and I had stickers, a bunch of car stickers on my hand, rolled up on my hand like that. And I was walking, 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 came to the edge of the town, walked into this small little lane which was leading to a village. I was walking and three young ladies were passing by. They were on the other side of the road and I was on this side of the road and I thought, yeah, maybe they want some stickers. So I approached the three ladies, slowly, but surely, slowly, you know, and the three ladies were like, going away, 
going away and their bodies were like this, you know, like very, very apprehensive. What is this black guy wanting from me? I came closer and I came closer and I said, Oh, do. And I'm going to talk to you for free one cup. And then suddenly they said to me, they said to themselves, Aku! Tambi, aku bimba! Okay guys, that's all from me. Thank you very much for having me. Please uh, stick around for more shows. I will give the mic to my good brother Ashwin. Ashwin! Thank you everybody. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Sivani Sen. Okay, so we're on the topic of Indians and Tambis and tourism and stuff like that. Some of you might have noticed that I've got a pretty interesting looking t-shirt going on that says I, I know it's got 3D effects and all because of my man books and all that, but like basically it says Tambi, alright? So this is a very interesting story that I have because I went through the same exercise that he went through as well. Uh, growing up in Kuching, I never really understood why we were called Tambi for the matter because like Tamil, in Tamil, Tambi basically means younger brother. So you know when, when someone came up to me and said, like, Hey Tambi, hey Tambi, I was like, Oh, this guy is so polite, you know? 